Hey everybody, welcome to New Music 30. This is Brent Schlemmer here once again for week number 15. This is episode 15 tonight. Yep, that's right. 15 episodes of New Music 30. Go find all of the previous episodes on our channel YouTube. That's a New Music 30 show on YouTube, so check that out. But tonight, got a very special guest, Indiana Stalwart, Mr. Jeff Bird. So let's get right to the interview. Jeff Bird, thanks for doing the show. Welcome tonight. How you doing? What's going on? How you Good. Been? How are you doing, Brent? I'm uh, hanging in there. I've been. <laughs> I've been. I've Have been. I've not been. I've been good. Can't complain too much. The Rona is treating you all right. I mean, we've all kind of, everybody that I've talked to, you know, and I just, I, I think it varies depending on like what your day job is. You know, yeah. it seems to me your day job's like pretty much just Jeff Bird. Well, you know, it depends on how you look at it, but I've uh, we've we've stayed pretty healthy because, um, you know, it's not good for the music career. But I, right before the Rona hit, I had about a a year of just uh, being a musician full time. I'd left my yeah. day job, and um, so you know, just kind of getting the little touring situation going and starting to make a little money and then it all hit and so uh so now i'm just indoors being creative and you know trying to trying to keep right music and create music but then using some other you know side talents and things to try to make some extra income but so it's interesting you know right i i'm i am not a stranger to the uh hustle yes hustle hustle <laughs> I, I don't know that much about what you got going on. I know some of the highlights. I know that you've got, like, the last time I think we we did anything together was when I might have booked you, and I think that was an album release show. So that's probably a year and a half ago. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, yeah, since since then, that, that was, like, right after I quit the day job and um, was going full-time and uh, – since then, with uh, the Rona stuff, um, you know, I've just been working on other music and other ideas. I mean, starting from the point you're talking about, we had just completed the B-Town album um, and made a couple of videos uh, for that album. And uh, we had recorded it at uh, Studio Static Shack. Um, Alan Johnson was the recorder producer here in Indianapolis. and we uh it was a pretty big album for me because it's the first time i really um spent <laughs> more than i've been comfortable with in the past you know in yeah. the studio and sure. you know we, we brought in um studio musicians uh because i uh, up to that point i played with a few local guys and really that had kind of uh, when it's when it's course, and so I didn't really have going into the studio a true band. So we ended up hiring basically most of the guys from the John Mellencamp band uh, that he records and tours with. Alan Johnson knew all those guys, and I've been a fan of uh, guitar player, songwriter, singer Larry Crane, who was you know Mellencamp's side side guy. So I just did it and you know, emptied the vaults and uh, right, right. I'm sure. got, got that completed. And then after that, I actually had um, in those sessions enough to put out really another album. They just, they just needed some additional instrumentation. So I've been kind of working on that. But then while that was going on, that was kind of pre-corona, <laughs> Corona, <laughs> COVID, uh, um, and then since then, I've been just working on a lot of new stuff, um, playing with some new guys, um, started kind of this new entity called Bird in the Words. So it's the stuff we're working on now is more of a kind of a band, you know, more of a band collaboration as far as the the music goes. It's more, you know, you come in, I come in with lyrics and an idea and we kind of see what happens live and um so it's, it's definitely different than anything I've really done before. And it, you know, it's cool. It kind of gives you different sounds maybe than, you know, what I would naturally come up with 
if I was trying to create the guitar, all the guitars and all the bass and all the drums on my own. So that's been really cool. Um, and then I've been working on like non-music stuff to try and pay the bills, selling, uh, selling vintage clothes and started a little online vintage shop. And uh, so trying to get that off the ground and got into uh, vintage motorcycles. That's, Long story. Yeah. <laughs> Long story, I mean, but uh, buying and sure, selling those. I'm sure it's an equally like distracting yeah. thing in your life in the same way that music is like, oh, I really, really like this. I kind of want to do this a bunch, but ooh, ooh, over here is cool too. You know, yeah, no, I get you. Well, I think, you know, I think with the COVID thing, up until that point, really music was, you know, pretty much other than, you know, the relationships you have with people, music was 24 hours a day in my head. And then sure. when it kind of gets taken away from you, you're like, well, okay, what do I do with myself? And uh, actually, it's been kind of good for me in the fact that I've discovered, you know, other interests. And I think you need to, you know, sometimes you need that to have a more <laughs> fuller life experience, you know, it's just, sure. I was like, Hey, there's, there's other stuff I like. And I like with the, the vintage stuff and the, the motorcycles I made new, new groups of friends and, you know, and uh, so then you, you have other people that once you get your music going, you can kind of bring them into, um, you know, coming to see your shows and listening to your music. So it's been kind of, cool. and it's, it, the, the, buying and selling of uh, the motorcycles uh, has been interesting because it's kind of taken place of touring. So it's like sure. I, I'll drive to South Dakota to go sell a motorcycle or I've been down to, you know, Georgia or, um, you know, uh, Washington, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, you name it. I've like been there within the last year. So it's almost like I get to tour. Sure. <laughs> except there's no music. Right. <laughs> unfortunately yeah yeah so what do you got for us musically right now what are you doing that's new like you say you got a little bit are you you know you're like are you just essentially embellishing those uh, yeah, the rest of those tracks that. are you is that like your most recent project but sometimes it's just somebody's fiddling with a chord and i go hey play that again that sounds cool and then we just start going from there and I try to mumble along with it until I get, you know, a certain thought in my head or sound of a word and just, you just start kind of building as it goes. And that's, sure. you know, that's been really cool because I've just never really, really done that style of, uh, you know, creating. Most of the time it's, you know, I've been in the room, in a room by myself. I write the lyrics. I come up with the, all the chords and write the guitar sure. and kind of have the beat in my head. And then I go and, Kind of tell people here's what i think i hear and this is just on the spot it either sounds good and, or it doesn't and we abandon that idea and we try something else so we've got about three or four songs um uh, right now just in that fashion and that's kind of kicked me into a songwriting uh groove that you know hasn't been really going all that well during this covid thing and uh sure it's a it's a lot of uh you know, it's more, uh, more songs that are either first person, you know, or, or, or um, getting into more of the commentary on what's going on in the world. You know, if you want to call it a political song or whatever, but uh, the type of writing, but just more observations about, you know, where we are in our society now. And it's, you know, it's like you can't help but not... Sure think about those things especially when you're sitting inside a lot and you know you're not interacting with that people all that much anymore and uh and you're watching a lot of too much tv and you know newscasts and so you know i've been writing kind of that style of of music um just in the past few months so it'll be interesting to see once it's done i'm kind of slowly releasing um videos and music from the b-town session that we did like i said i had enough for really another album so i'm kind of not really doing a whole hey album cd or album release show type of thing right. i'm just going to kind of post those 
you know, really, once I get a song kind of completed, release it with a video of some sort as I go along. And then probably the next actual um, album we'll put out will be more of the songs that I'm doing with the, the band right now. So <laughs> um, Ryan Shores on drums, uh, Brandon Schaefer's on bass and Rod uh, Schindler is on guitar. Nice. And and then I play guitar and doing the singing and the songwriting and uh, so um, Rod was one of the bands that he was in was Tonos Triad and uh, Ryan and Brandon have both been in the Jeremy Vogt band and uh, uh, it was actually for like an NPR Tiny Desk concert um, we did that video for and it was shot in a brewery. Uh, I don't think it's around anymore. It was Roundtown Brewery uh, here right. on. The uh, south side but uh so i'll probably be sending you that that's a cool one because you know it's a live crowd and we just went into the bar one night and uh um, cameras huh <laughs> yeah had some cameras and got up on the got up on the bar and they even lent us like a scissor lift so matt can get up you know his camera up high and nice. it turned out really turned out really well Bar. The bartender tells you, yeah, this too shall pass, and life looks better. 
the first video off of B-Town, which Matt did as well. And that one, I think, turned out just amazing um, because it, uh, it was the title song, B-Town, and we went and shot it in Bloomington. Um, and it's kind of a mixture of, uh, you know, live live action uh, filming. And then uh, he went in and kind of scoured the, the internet for all kinds of uh, memory and memories and historical video and, you know, photos from, uh, from IU back to like the early eighties. Did I see that you got into your old dorm room? Yes, I did. Yeah, that was that was a surreal out of body experience. I bet because um, I I didn't I did make some calls down there and uh, we were able to get in and the guy uh, um, you know in charge of the building. Uh, they let us in on a day where they had just finished 
having some sort of, uh, it was like some massive uh, Boy Scout weekend or something. So like the dorms were full of Boy Scouts. So we got in there just like right after they left. And uh, I, I thought I could remember the room and I was pretty close. And the guy let me in the room. I was like, no, no this, is, this isn't it. I just immediately tell, even though they all look about the same. I was like, this isn't sure. the room. And he let me into the room right next door to it. And I was like, this is it. This is the room. You know, right. you just, you kind of, I could feel it, you know. And so. Which, which dorm was it? Uh, it was uh, Teeter and yeah. the wing was Boysen. We were like on the third floor. So, so yeah, it was, you know, same. Uh, and suddenly you're kind of transported back and you, you know, have some of those old uh, memories and feelings. So it was really cool. I was there laying on my bed. <laughs> what would have been my old bed looking up yeah. the ceiling. Yeah. Bram, Bram. Bram. He is, uh, yeah. He, he does uh, a lot of video work here in uh, Indy and he did a video for me called uh, Christmas at the dump. So it was kind of our, kind of our Christmas song or it's a, it's a, it's a humorous song. The video was, you know, shot in a uh, old 1950s RV that I, that I was able to, to pick up and <laughs> you know, it's kind of your, uh, kind of your white trash Christmas.
Christmas at the Dump video was the first video that the guys that I'm working with now appear, appear in. So I guess that's. I have seen that. Work. I have seen that. It, yeah. Was that out just this past Christmas? Yeah. 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 I, I, I do remember seeing that because I remember going, oh, yeah, hi, I know. I know those guys. <laughs> I know those guys. Yeah. That I was just actually tonight um, talking to somebody about shooting, shooting the next video. So our upcoming, I guess my upcoming release will be a song called Pink Guitar. And uh, so we're kind of talking about how to. So hopefully that'll be out within like the next, you know, month. Plug something else fun that you got going on. Well, I, like I said, I, I've been doing the vintage uh, clothing thing. So I do have a, a uh, Instagram site called Birdhouse Vintage that I've uh, started, you know, starting to post and sell stuff on there because it's just uh, my uh, hobby has become kind of overwhelming. So I'm like, well, I need to get rid of some of this stuff and, sure. uh, you know, I can, I can, I go out, I find stuff, you know, it's just one of those addictive things where I, I like, I like to treasure hunt and, uh, go out and find something cool. And, uh, then I'll, uh, turn around and once the thrill of the thrill of the capture is done, right. then I'm like, eh, I don't really need this. <laughs> so then I'll, so then I'll turn around and sell it. So there you go. That, that habits become like a kind of a side business. So I'm trying to, Trying to get that off the ground, and then, like right. I said, the the uh, motorcycle thing. I mean, that's kind of not really a business, but I like, you know. Right. Once you start, a, it's another way to have fun. While yeah. Still well, I mean, productive about like, it. Once you start, kind of, uh, you know, like buying and selling, collecting a certain era, you start to learn about other bikes of that era, and then you see them you know, online or on an auction or somewhere. And you're like, gosh, I could, I could buy that and sell it to these guys that I know and make a little money. And uh, right. Right. so that's kind of, kind of where that took off from. So like, I just, uh, I just bought a motorcycle. It was a BMW, a 70s BMW motorcycle on an auction. Had to go down to Georgia to pick it up. But, uh, and uh, so turned around and sold it and made a little money. So Nice. About a year ago, I would have no clue, you know, what a 70s BMW motorcycle was worth. So, you know, so it's kind of a, a benefit, I guess, of being stuck inside. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not a big TV watcher, so I'm always on online, you know, looking up stuff or going down a rabbit hole and learning about something new. And then I get get into it for a while and then go on to the next thing so cool well thanks man thanks again i appreciate it my pleasure thanks for doing hopefully the job. i was hopefully i was interesting enough i don't <laughs> we i will i will squeeze every drop of interesting out of this thing you will I... make me look so interesting yep that's how and it's gonna work people will be like he's the most interesting man in the world that's right it'll all happen. right i'll edit it all right, right. thanks Jeff. appreciate it see you later see you man well, that's all we've got for you tonight, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Special thanks to Jeff Bird for bringing his who's your goodness to our show tonight to cap off season number one. That's right, 15 episodes. It's where we are. 15 episodes in, and we're going to call it a season. I'm going to go uh, take a little time off, um, line up some more interviews. If you've got suggestions, feel free to hit me with them on the Facebook page or in a comment section on this on uh, YouTube. Suggestions for uh, next season's uh, episodes, artists to uh, profile. So thanks a lot for hanging in there for 15 episodes. I'm Brent Schlemmer for New Music 30. Thanks for a great first season. We'll see you back again very soon for season number two.